We welcome Nebraska coach Matt Rule. We've been rocking out to his personal office playlist while he's been out of the office. We went, we went Amy Winehouse, Cody Jinks, and then little Dave Matthews ants marching. That's you are you're all over the place, coach. <laughs> that's that's Thursday morning for you right there. That's uh yo, know, Dave is uh Dave is game plan mode. And so um I uh when I put on the the, the red zone stuff, I, I put a little Dave on. So Oh, so Dave is in the red zone. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. All right, because you know everything's compressed, so you you need a little saxophone. Because you you told me you're you're more of a uh, Gray Street kind of that that era. Lot of when when they they brought the old producer back and the songs got a little down again. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, a good that's good red zone music. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. He's the best. So. Long live Lily White. That's what it is. I remember Steve Lily White. So you guys are going to play Michigan State. The stakes are you can be bowl eligible if you win this game. You've won a few in a row with a team that before you took over could not win one score games. What are you doing different that allows them to, in the fourth quarter, be able to put games away instead of let them slip? Well, you know, I you know, I don't I can't speak about before. I don't know how things were done. I, I, I do know um, we're kind of doing the same process we did at Temple and Baylor. You know, we, we practice really hard during the week. Um, I try to convince the guys that it's really not about starting fast, though we'd love to start fast, but you know, we want to kind of be like a, a body blows organization that 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 you know tries to play physical and um, get into the fourth quarter and, and, and be confident and, and make plays. And so I think the players are just really bought into it. You know, we, we, we practice really hard. and um, I think that gives them confidence when the game is on the line in the fourth. So you've had a lot of injuries on offense. You've had to adjust what you wanted to do. Uh, how much schematically have you had to adjust as the season's gone on because you've lost receivers, linemen that, that you were hoping you'd have? Yeah, you know, I think I think you know. At the end of the day, we want to run the football. Uh, we want to be explosive in the passing game. Um, haven't been very explosive, and I think a, as of late, you know, we put the freshman receivers out there. They they've opened the field up for us. You know, we've had some long touchdown passes in the last couple of games, but I think Sat and the offensive staff have done a phenomenal job of just, you know, figuring out what guys do, what they do well. You know, we started the season off with one quarterback, moved to another one. Um, every week, you know, that we lose three linemen to, you know, against Northwestern. We start three different guys against Purdue and find a way to get a win in the Big Ten. So um, I think those guys have just kind of grinded. And, you know, to me, offense is all about, you know, you want to have a core philosophy, but just tell me what your players do well and let's, let's try to do that. Well, and that's the thing. You, hiring Harburg, you've been building around him since, since moving to him. And it seems like, you know, it, it, it's weird because this is Nebraska – it's, we know what made Nebraska great back in the day. You guys are running some option. There's a there's a touchdown against Purdue, the the long TD pass to Jalen Lloyd that is the speed option as play action. Mm -hmm. Reminded me a little Tommy Frazier. Now they would have gone triple as play action, <laughs> but speed option as play play action in 2023, I will take. Yeah, no doubt. We hit we hit a 50 yarder off of uh, the I formation option against uh, Northwestern, and you know the principles are still the same. I think the biggest thing, uh, Andy, is we played three or four games uh, with gusting winds that not many guys could throw the ball into, you know, against Illinois, we kicked off into the wind and ended up recovering it because it, it just got up there and blew back to us. So, you know, getting here, getting to the big 10 West playing in, here at Memorial stadium, you know, playing at some of the other places, you, you'd better be able to run the football. This is not, you know, Baylor TCU anymore. I'm not playing in, you know, 90 degrees and, and beautiful. So the option gives us an opportunity just to mix it in to make you have to work on it, uh, to create some elite play actions, to get the ball on the perimeter uh, on really windy days. We'll be right back with more from Nebraska coach Matt Rule. But first, let me tell you about bird dogs. I've told you, you want to live a life of maximum efficiency, you get your bird dogs lined, shorts. You can wear them anywhere. They feel like they were made for you. But the weather's getting a little cooler. What are you going to do? You can't, can't have your legs exposed to the elements oh bird dogs makes pants too don't you worry look at these the steven jobs beautiful lined also feel like they were made for you but they double as the best fitting chinos you've ever owned you can wear them to work you can wear them to dinner 
wherever you need to wear them. Also, Bird Dogs makes incredible joggers that fit great when you want to look casual and sporty. Go to birddogs.com right now. They've also got polos. I got the Fidel Bass Pro right here. So you can cover your entire body in Bird Dogs. Use the code STAPLES and you get a free Hydro Flask style bottle with your purchase. So birddogs.com, code STAPLES for that free Hydro Flask style bottle. Live a life of maximum efficiency with Bird Dogs. I am very glad you mentioned that fourth quarter touchdown to Malachi Coleman in the Northwestern game because I have a photo for you. I have a screenshot. Uh, for for the kids in the audience, and, and Matt, I, I've learned in the last few days that the audience is pretty young. Like they, We, we talked about the TV show Dallas on last night's show. They didn't know who that what show that was. <laughs> uh, kids, this is the eye formation. This is a full – there's a fullback and there's a tailback. And when Heinrich takes the snap – He's going to fake to that fullback. That's called a dive. And those cornerbacks are going to go, what is this witchcraft? And they're going to crash. Touchdown. It was I, I, like brought a tear to my eye, coach. <laughs> you know, it's funny that, uh, you know, that fullback for us, Janir and Bonner, you know, great, great, great young talent, just a freshman. Uh, you know, he was a receiver, a uh, really highly recruited receiver. And, um, you know, he went from receiver to tight end. And then we said, hey, you want to play a little fullback? And, Man, he'll, he'll go out and do it all. So, you know, I can't wait for three or four years from now where, you know, he's a senior, he's out there, he's running routes in the slot, and then comes back and we can get in the eye. I mean, I think the sky's the limit with the personnel that we have. How does that conversation go when, when you're talking to him about that role? Is it, is it, hey, coach, whatever I need to do to get on the field? It's different with every guy, but with JB, man, he's going to do whatever you ask. Like, we've we've handed him the ball. We've, we've – uh, We've, you know, asked them to run down on kickoff. I mean, we, we have some guys here that just want to win. They want to play, you know, and um, I think I think the fact that we as a staff have a track record of putting players from Temple and Baylor, switching their positions, putting them in the NFL. I think the fact that, you know, we've been in the NFL, um, when we tell guys, hey, we think this is your best chance to, to get on the field now and then eventually it's your best chance to make money someday. Uh, a lot of guys seem to be willing to do it. Um, they'll try it. And, and, you know, sometimes we move a guy in and, you know what? Hey, let's move you back. You're better off at your other position. But I think they know we care enough that we're trying to get them on the field. Well, and I like the way you're doing it with a, a converted receiver because here's the part I can't figure out about modern offenses is everybody uses the tight end in so many different ways now. And you move them all around the formation, but so few people just have him right before the snap line up between the quarterback and the tailback, which seems like that would really diversify – what you can do if that's in your toolbox. Yeah, I mean, we, we played um, last year in Carolina. It was my last game. I got fired the next morning. But we played the uh, we played the Niners, and it was like, I mean, you talk about witchcraft. It felt like witchcraft, you know. Um, they could run all the outside zone plays, but then they could run all these other plays, and, and they, you know, they had Jusic on the field, and what personnel grouping are they in? They had no idea. Then you're playing the Saints. They have Taysom Hill. Like, what, what, what offense are they in? So – I think with us, we just, when we got here, we said, you know, we want to run the football. Um, we want to be explosive. Let's get positionless players. Let's, let's try to play like the Niners. Let's try to play like, like the Saints with Taysom. And, you know, we thought maybe Heinrich would be that role. Uh, as he's emerged into the starting quarterback, you know, now we find other guys like, like Bonner to do stuff with. So I'm curious, you don't have a, this is what I do. This is my offense. And how much of that is that as a young coach, you were a D-line coach, an O-line coach, a defensive coordinator, an offensive coordinator. How much of that is because you have coached everything? I think it's a lot of that. You know, um, I was looking at us on defense. You know, at, at Temple, we were a 4-3, and we were a, you know, a top-10 defense. At uh, Baylor, you know, we got to Baylor. We struggled for two years. We moved to, like, the three-down, Coach Heacock at Iowa State's type defense. You know, we led the nation in sacks, I think, or we're in the top five in all these defensive categories. Went to went to the NFL, and the first year we were the worst defense. The second year we were number one in defense or number two in defense. And we adjusted to more of a double stand-up edge, you know, mm -hmm. hybrid 3-4 type thing. We got here. Uh, Phil Snow, who had been with me for a long time, left. Tony came in. Tony's a 3-3-5 guy. So, to me, defense is not about the scheme. It's about how you tackle and block and get off blocks, and it's about how you practice. Offensively at Temple, we were in I formation. We went to Baylor. We were more spread. Um, you know, here uh, we were kind of got, kind of going back to our roots. So I just think I, I like to look at the players. I like to say to myself, like, hey, 
what do they do well? But at the core of it, you know, we want to run the ball and stop the run. Uh, we want to create explosive plays and not give them up and win third down and score touchdowns in the red zone. It's not real complicated. It's just really, hey, hey, what's the best way for us to do those things? Well, you are leading the Big Ten in runs of over 10 yards. So that that it's happening. But I, I want to bring up uh, probably something that, that drives you nuts, and that's the ball security. I, you know, you opening kickoff. Like, now, you recovered that one, but you had some other ones that, that you lost in that last game. And I, I heard you talking in the press conference about the X factor, about, you know, you've got the ball in one hand, and then you bring the X over. How how much does do you smile when Emmett Johnson, as he's crossing the goal line untouched, does the X factor to protect the ball coming across the goal line? Yeah, you know it, it's um, it's 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 just kind of in those freshmen's bloodstream. Like it's you know Jalen Lloyd scores his first touchdown, he does it. Um, Tommy Hill picks off a pass, he does it. And it, it's one of those standards that we have. It's really you know I learned it from Christian. McCaffrey, like I, I showed them the video of Christian, you know, he's at the 49ers, I think at the time after, you know, we both left and he scores a touchdown and he's doing it crossing the goal line. Like, like you know, it, to me, it's, 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 it's kind of the standard you want to have program wide that says, Hey, even when I'm about to score, I know I'm not going to fumble. I'm still going to just do this one little thing um, because we know the ball is the most important thing. And, and, and for me, Andy, like I, we're leading the nation in fumbles, we're leading the nation in lost fumbles to be five and three with that happening. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And so, uh, you know, extreme times, you know, they call for uh, extreme measures. And, and you know, we, we practice ball security this week more than we ever have. And it, it's it's not any one thing. It's it's snaps. It's drop snaps. It's, it's, it's all kinds of things. And so um, to go up there to East Lansing and, and try to win a game uh, versus a really, really stout physical defense, we cannot turn over the, turn the football over. But it was pretty cool to put a picture up at the team meeting of Emmett side by side with Christian McCaffrey. And just say, hey, the standard is the standard. And uh, being able to show the guys, hey, this is what it looks like, not saying, hey, don't do this. So now, do you do anything like, I, you know, the program, one of my favorite movies where Darnell Jefferson has to carry the ball around campus and everybody on the team is trying to knock it out. Do you, do, with your skill position players on offense, do you, do you hand them footballs and be like, all right, everybody, go get them? It's funny, it's funny you say that because that, that, was, uh, that was our running back coach's suggestion. And, you know, I, my point to those guys was like, you know what, guys, um, uh, A, I don't want to get a call from some you know uh, uh, professor on campus whose class has been disrupted by our guys like like happens in the movie. But um, but but also like it, it's kind of down to like three or four positions. It's just a couple guys. And so, it, you know, to me, everything's technical. Everything is it's not that they, they're, they're not trying. It's like my golf swing. I tried really hard to hit it down the middle. But, you know, if something's off. So how we hold the ball, just making it technique, but 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 trying to really practice it a lot more and a lot harder. That's what we've done this week. One thing I heard you say earlier this week that I, I found interesting is that the the players you inherited here were already pretty naturally process oriented, which I find interesting because it doesn't. I've always thought that's not a natural way of being of thinking. Okay, I, here's how, how do I practice to do this? How do I work to do this? Everybody, I feel like, tends to think about what's the result I want. How nice is it when you have a group that's kind of already in that mindset already? It's been amazing. You know, I think it's a credit to Scott Frost and his staff. Um, to me, you know, as a, if you're a smart coach, you follow good staffs. You know, I I remember watching you know, Urban Meyer, you know, one of the coaches I look up to, and he followed, followed Gary Blackney. You know, um, he followed Coach Weber at Utah. He followed, he followed coaches that had taught guys the right things. And uh, so I, I try to emulate that. I, I have a lot of respect for Scott. And so um, – but it's a very Midwestern value, right? Like, you know, you, you grew up on a farm. It's like, you know what you want. You know you want a bountiful harvest. And you understand that in order to get that, you have to plant seeds very, very early on. And you can't have a day off. You can't have a bad day. And so for us, I constantly remind them of what they want. You know, we talk about the outcome all the time. We talk about the goal all the time. We just can't focus on it. You know, we just have to say to ourselves, okay, like, like we want to we want to beat Michigan State. We want to win our sixth game. So if we want to win, we're going to have to play well. And if we want to play well, we're going to have to be in the moment. If we want to play well, we're going to have to prepare at a high level. If we want to play well, we can't get distracted by a bad call or a bad play. And so I think for me in year 11, fourth job, I'm way, I'm able to articulate it way better to the guys as opposed to when I was a younger coach and just saying like, hey, just do the process. Now I'm able to say like, hey, you, you, you want this. So what steps do you need to take in order to get there? Let's just do those together. 
and you've coached teams that have been through lots of strife before. This Michigan State team has been through an awful lot. You know Harlan Barnett. This is their last game at home. Harlan Barnett, this might be his last chance as a head coach at, at Michigan Stadium. How much of that do you impart to the players is, hey, you have to be ready for these guys to play potentially their best game? Yeah, I, I don't think that we've um... – at the University of Nebraska, you know, uh, like they sent out the, the conference sent out a bowl spreadsheet of like what bowls guys have been to, because it impacts what bowl you can go to. And every team in the Big Ten has has a, their name on there except for us. So I don't know that we've uh, earned the right, you know, leading the nation in fumbles and not having a lot of success to start, you know, thinking ahead, thinking about things. I think our guys are pretty pretty locked into like, hey, we have to be in the moment. And I think the big thing is when you look at Michigan State, they have good players. I think, you know, in the midst of a difficult season, they've had some guys really rise up and play at a high level. I mean, Carter, the tailback, he, he played for our running back coach at UConn. I think he's a fantastic coach. And I mean, he's going to be a fantastic player. And, you know, it's like I told our guys before the Northwestern game. You know, all those guys could have jumped in the portal. All those guys in Northwestern stayed. They all battled. They all came together. It's going to be a fight. And that was a 14-8 or whatever it was, 9-6. I can't remember what it was. But it was a, a one-score game in the fourth yeah. quarter. So – so our guys know Michigan State. They know how good they are. They know how physical they are. And they know that on senior day, with all those guys have been through, that they're going to come out and they're going to battle. And I think that's why it'll be an even game down the stretch. So I, I do have to ask you this before I let you go, that there is a report out there about from ESPN about a, a Big Ten coaches call on Wednesday uh, discussing the, the situation in Michigan. You've, you've played the Wolverines this year. You've, you've dealt with that before all of the, the accusations came out. But – can you tell us what what happened on that call? What what the discussion was about? Yeah, I think I think it was a chance for everybody just to kind of uh, talk about you know how, how they felt, how they were impacted. Um, you know, I, you know, obviously, obviously, uh, uh, Tony Petiti, I think, is a wonderful commissioner, and you know, I'll, I'll keep all the comments in house. But um, I think uh, you know, I think a lot of people's lives, livelihoods, jobs, their seasons, players, players' health. I mean all kinds of things have been impacted by this. And so it was an opportunity really for all of us for the first time, just to kind of see what's going and, and, and talk about it. Like we talk about everything really as, as coaches. I think the big 10 does a great job of having um, regular coaches calls. This one was just specific to that, um, to that incident. I know your season's going, when, when that stuff comes out, do you go back to that game and, and look at anything or do you just kind of move on and, and deal with it later? Um, I think, um, I think you just sit there and say, you know, you sit there and just feel really bad for the players on both sides, um, you know, because this is this is this is really our last chance to teach young people how to go out there and compete and overcome adversity and 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 go through ups and downs and highs and lows. And you just hope when you do this that no side ever has an advantage over the other that's not gained and earned appropriately. And um, as we tell parents that we're going to teach them how to be young men, I think the first thing we teach them is integrity and honesty. So. If uh, if I ever feel and I can't I can't comment on the specifics of this because I don't know, but if I ever feel like my guys have been shorted, um, uh, that's uh, you know obviously I'm here to fight for them. That's uh, that would certainly be that would certainly be heartbreaking and disappointing to me as someone who loves college football. You know, it's one thing when it's recruiting, but when you when you when the, when we mess with the 60 minutes of the game, um, that's uh, that's really 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 impacting. Because I'll tell you this, Andy, guys, players go out there and they get hurt. Um, and if uh, if I ever knew what plays you were running, my guys are running the ball. Before the snap, um, I don't know that that's fair to the health and safety of our players or anything. So, uh, I certainly hope it's—I certainly hope it's not what, what everyone says it is. Um, but I don't know, so I can't comment on that specifically. So, so before I let you go back to your team, you always talk about just winning the week, going one and zero. But if you win this week, you are going to a bowl game. You do get those fifteen extra practices. What would that mean to this program? Oh yeah, I mean, make no mistake, we want to go to a bowl game. <laughs> yeah. We need to go to a bowl game. I mean, we need to practice. We've got a really, really, really good young group of players. And so um, practicing practicing um, those extra practices would be so invaluable because uh, there's guys already that I say to myself, like, hey, I think he can he can start at this position next year. Or, you know, some older guys, I'm like, man, if I can move him from this to this, I think he can become an NFL player. So, you know, it's one thing to do that in the spring. And then if you're wrong, you're like, oh, man, I just wasted this kid's, you know, three months. But if I can do it in the bowl game and get a picture of it, they can see it. And then they can also see, like, the guys have to make decisions. Do I go in the portal? What do I do? If they can go through the the, the, the bowl game and, and, and try something new or 
do something new. I mean, they can really see where their, their future is here. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very hopeful that our guys will play well and that we'll have a chance to go play in the postseason. They can have a wonderful experience and our, our young players uh, and team can develop for the future. I know you're built for the wind and the, and the, and the cold, but it's usually a little sunny where you go. So good luck with that, Coach. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.